Josh, when you evaluate yourself through through three weeks, what, what do you see uh, that's the main thing that, that you need to do better? And then uh, kind of following off of that, how, how have you and Marcus been talking through uh, the way you guys were playing through three weeks? That's good. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. When you look at the way you've been playing through three weeks, you and Marcus both, how, how do you guys evaluate each other and make each other better through three weeks? And then, and then what do you see on film that you need to improve on the most? Um, I think on a day-to-day -day basis, we really just talk about just like the little details and not always trying to make the big play or just making our reads and always trying to be in the right spot and not trying to get the game moving too fast for us. So I think that's our biggest improvement that we made over the three weeks. We kind of slowed down and we kind of took our time and actually broken down film and stuff. All right, we'll go next to Austin Ward, Letterman Row. Austin. Josh, it seems like you're doing a little bit of everything in the secondary right now. Like, how would you describe your role? Because uh, it seems like you could pop up anywhere. Um, I can describe it kind of a, like a Swiss Army knife. Just kind of anywhere you need me. Do you like that part, or would you rather have one defined role? Honestly, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to be out there with my team, make plays, and hopefully get to where we want to be at the end of the season. Thanks, man. Go so next to Dan Hope from 11 Warriors. Dan? Hey, Josh. Uh, Ryan talked before about just the lack of, you know, margin for error that you guys have. I'm sure you guys always feel like, you need to win every game, but is that even more amplified this year with how shortened this season has become? Um, definitely. Uh, you can't make mistakes. I mean, we've got limited games. Even Maryland last week got canceled, so you never really know what's going to happen. So everything counts, so we have to go into every game, every week, focus. Do you see, like, a different sense of urgency right now just because there are so many less games? Definitely. Definitely. Because uh, they harp on it every day. Just can't take days off because you never know what's going to happen. I mean, we get a limited amount of games and we have to get to where we want to be. So, next up, we'll go to uh, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Nathan. Josh, uh, just what stands out to you about Ohio State, or I'm sorry, Indiana's receiving core that, you know, obviously the two wideouts and the tight end that they have. I mean, this is a team that can probably throw more weapons at you than you guys have seen from Indiana before. Um, I think the thing that stands out is their athleticism. I mean, every year they've improved. So we have to come into this week with the mindset of we have to play at our best and be at our best because we know they're going to come with everything they got. All right, we'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Bill? Yeah, Josh, you just give me your assessment of how you've played and how you think the secondary has played this year. Um, I think I've played pretty good, and then, as well as the secondary, but there are some places we can improve as far as tackling and some things like that. But all in all, I think we're in the right direction, and we're where we want to be right now, so we just got to keep working. Okay, thank you. Go well, next to Bill Landis from The Athletic. Bill. Hey, Josh. Uh, prior to this year, how much experience did you have playing man-to-man uh, -man coverage? And in the times they put you in those positions this year, how do you feel like that's going? Um, I had a bit of experience because Halfley used to make me practice with the corner sometimes. So I wasn't too nervous about it, lining up in the slot. So I'm actually comfortable out there, really. I like being down in the box close, seeing everything fast. So. And we'll go next to Tony Gerdeman, Buckeye Scoop. Tony. Josh, in that role, what, what do you think you bring to this defense then when you can the slot or you can be that deep safety? What do you bring to the defense then? Uh, this playmaking ability, energy. Just a guy that just wants to play ball, see ball, get ball. So. And we saw that on that two-point conversion? <laughs> yeah, kind of. That was just a kind of keep him out of the end zone, don't let him get it. So. All right, next up, Jeremy Birmingham, Letterman Row. Jeremy. Hey, Josh. Um, during your recruitment, I hope you don't mind if we go back to that a little bit, but you, you were obviously considering a number of schools that are very successful programs, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Georgia, Florida, you know, all those big names. What was it culture-wise at Ohio State that was different for you, and why did you pick the Buckeyes at that time 
No, and was it obvious to you to see the difference culture just from being on visits? Um, yeah, actually during my junior year, I took uh, a lot of visits during that summer. And I felt like just every time I came to Ohio, it was just like the brotherhood, like a home feeling. Just was that of, was that much different than anywhere else, or, or you know, is there a way to to tangibly separate that from other places? Um, I feel it was a lot different from other places. You know, most places really just care about the football and years after that, but they don't talk about where you want to be after football or what you actually want to do in life. So I think that actually attracted me here to the Buckeyes. Thanks. All righty, next up, uh, we've got time for two more. Uh, and the first one is Tim May, Letterman Row. Tim. Yeah, first of all, uh, Josh, have you ever owned a Swiss Army knife? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> you just are one, right? Uh, yeah. and, and then number two, when you, when you watch these guys on video, Michael Penix Jr., uh, just what stands out about him? He seems to be playing with a, you know, a lot more confidence than even uh, the beginning of the year. And just uh, what is the threat uh, level he brings on Saturday? Like you mentioned, his confidence. Uh, he's a great player. He has a strong arm and he has a really great receiving core. So we know they're going to try to attack us downfield and they're going to challenge us this week. So we just have to be ready. Is that play you saw him make uh, to keep them in the game, whatever, you know, against Penn State, was that, is, is that about as good a play as you've ever seen by an individual, you know, the reach? Uh, it definitely at the goal is. Line? It's just to want to win. It's yeah. just the will to win, so. Good, man. Thank you. We'll wrap up, Josh, with uh, Stephen Needs from Cleveland.com. Stephen. Hey, Josh, last season it was basically just a single high safety, and so it was Jordan Fuller at all times. And, only, and really you didn't get a lot of snaps with real game snaps into that Clemson game. But when they came to you this spring with this kind of role, I know you, you want to – any way you can get on the field is fine, but when you were looking at it, did you see how this maybe better fit your skill set and what you bring to the table? And like, Were you excited about this role? Like, I don't know. Was this a more exciting opportunity than just this is only going to be one safety and we're going to play this safety only? But having this role specifically made for your skill set, were you, I don't know, excited about that at all? Or I don't know. Um. It wasn't really a plan coming in as Coach Collins came in. He kind of talked to me about multiple spots, but he just basically set me down and told me that he wanted me to learn every spot in the back end, basically. He said versatility is our biggest threat. So I think I took that to heart, and I felt like that was my biggest chance of getting on the field. Thanks. All right, Josh, thank you very much for your time.